Hey guys, it's Philip, and this is our first episode of Z-Tapes Hangout. And I'm glad to welcome Horde Wilson, our artist, and we will be chatting a little bit about music and other stuff and Z-Tapes related stuff. So I hope you will like it. It is first try. So if you have any feedback after it, uh, just let us know so we can make it better for future. So uh, first question or first thing I want to kind of ask you because I don't know what much about it is why did you move to Canada? What happened there? So I'm only I'm only staying here for like a month and a half, but basically my grandma was sick and I hadn't seen my other grandma in like a while. And, and my whole family is in Canada. My parents are from Canada. So we got an exemption and I got to come up and see family, which is nice. But like we've been COVID safe and everything. Um, and I'm also studying for my MCATs. So it was sort of like, I have like my own space here, but like I still like have been able to see family, which is nice. But yeah, I'm only here for a little bit. I'm moving back to Philly soon. Oh, okay, cool. Because I thought that it was for a little bit longer, but I guess this explains it a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, I've been here a month now, but yeah, I mean, almost two months actually. So, so do you enjoy it there? Oh yeah, I like it here. I, I've always liked Canada a lot. It's very different than the States, especially like during COVID. It's very, very different now, but I don't know, like, I don't know if I could live here because like I, I find in Philadelphia and stuff, like there's a certain like, like aggression that Americans have, which I sort of, I'm like used to it now. I don't know if I'm like, I don't like polite and like nice enough to live here. Sure, I get that. And so when you compare it, like, what do you miss in Philly or, or what do you miss like living there? So I, I like grew up about 45 minutes outside of Philadelphia. And like, as a kid, I never really got to like experience the city a lot. But I mean, lately I've been spending more time in the city and like, I, I went to Cleveland for college and yeah. I sort of, I envisioned Cleveland as like a big city, just like Philly. But it's not and there's like not a lot of people live there so like I miss Philadelphia a lot because like there's such diverse groups of people there and like there's a huge there's a huge underground scene for art like not just music but visual art and there's like a lot of exciting things happening down there because there's like a lot of like young people so I'm hoping I'm hoping to move down to Philly I'm actually moving down for a job downtown in May mm -hmm. And then I'm, I'm hoping to go to med school there. So I'd, we'll see. We'll see if I even get in. <laughs> so uh, what do you want to study on med school? Or is it just like general or? Um, so I'm actually interested in transgender health. So that's sort of, that's sort of like, I don't know. I have a passion for it. And like, you know, I'm involved with Trans Lifeline, the, the, yeah. the, the charity a little bit. So I'm, I'm hoping to get into it. It's hard because it's like specialized. So we'll see, but that's what I'm like passionate about. Cool. I didn't know about that you can study there because especially in, in Slovakia, the med school is pretty kind of standard thing that, you know, you do basic stuff for three years, then you kind of try to maybe professionalize or kind of move to one direction. But I haven't heard about anything like even does queer or whatever oriented like mental health problems regarding some special groups or whatever it's like especially even mental health in general in Slovakia it's kind of undervalued in some way so kind of cool I like that uh, that's that's great I hope it, it will work out for you yeah no me too <laughs> <laughs> yeah sure cool so so you you've been to Cleveland because of the school. So what is the biggest difference, or what, what do you see? What is different for you, even for example, musically there? Yeah, but the music, honestly, there's not there there's not a lot of indie music there. They have sort of like a bigger scene for like rap. Like I have a friend who does like rapping there, and like there's sort of like a bigger circuit in in Ohio for that. But Cleveland doesn't really have a lot of like indie. I would say Akron does. Akron's like probably an hour outside of Cleveland. But basically what, what happens is Cleveland is sort of 
they have a monopoly on there's this one company which I won't name but they have a monopoly on like openers and stuff and so they basically decide like who opens for like all the big artists Mm -hmm. but I in a way it's a little bit better just because you have more opportunities just because there's like not tons of artists like in Philadelphia everybody's in a band everybody has a band everybody's trying to like book shows and stuff like that and so it, it can be, be a little like hectic like I, I know when I was in high school I was, I was trying to book a lot of places in Philly and like they won't book you if you're like underage they won't book you if you haven't played a lot of shows sometimes they like ghost you and so like that's why Philly has such a big scene for basements and like underground mm-hmm. shows just because like Philadelphia is like notoriously impossible to book but oh, cool so I think I, Cleveland yeah Cleveland gave me, like a few more opportunities like I got to open mm-hmm. for La 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 which was nice because like I didn't really know what I was doing but they just like tossed me the opportunity which like that would never happen in Philly mm-hmm. interesting because I've been to Philly seven years ago and I experienced some shows there, but also I've been to house shows as well. So do you think that it did change since then? Um, it's hard for me to say because I didn't go to shows then. I would have uh-huh. been like 13. Or, or maybe maybe from other people saying like, oh, do you used to be different? Yeah, well, I don't know. I'm not sure because I've talked to people who say the scene is a little bit different now, mm-hmm. as in like it's moved a little bit more to being like gentrified and people sort of like look at you weird if you don't like dress like mm-hmm. a certain like new like hipster way. Okay. But I'm I'm not so sure about that. Like that might just be an isolated experience. I do think that Philly has like a very vibrant culture, like counterculture. Yeah, sure. So It's hard to t- say right now. I think it's going to be totally different after the pandemic. Yeah. Last time I went to to US, I heard that the Philly is becoming the new Brooklyn in some way. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I enjoyed staying in Philly, like even seven, year, seven years ago. I was there for two weeks and I really loved it. And that's even the reason why I want to do a festival there <laughs> at some point. But Oh, you should. You, you should. Honestly, it would. I think it would get a lot of attention there. Yeah, hopefully, maybe next year when I I was planning this year, but uh, it's possible. Yeah, it's no, not no. possible at, at all because I I just read some article that the things m- might get back normal to normal at maybe beginning of next year, maybe. Yeah, I mean that's what I've been hearing too. Just because. Yeah, I'd like I don't think like personally that the vaccine will be widely distributed till the summer and yeah, then sure. even then it's not it might be later even in Slovakia so I guess this year is is doomed for any sh- uh, shows at all. Yeah. So do do you miss it or do you miss going to shows or even playing shows? No. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like playing shows. I I yeah, mm-hmm. no, I don't like it. If I had a band, I would like it more like I used mm-hmm. to be. In high school, I was in this metal band called Meaty Ogre, mm-hmm. um, and I played bass in it. We just like played like lots mm-hmm. of like power metal and like cover songs and stuff, and that's fun. Like it's fun to do it with your friends and stuff. But basically, when I perform, I do it to a backing track, and it it's it's like basically karaoke. I'm oh, like sure. I just feel I just feel like weird about it because like then I'm like I'm just basically just like, you know what I mean it's just playing over like the backing tracks so I don't feel like I'm actually like performing as much yeah and like it's weird because I started out doing like um like pop like psych pop like Mm -hmm. I wanted to be like the next team Impala and so I would always go to shows and be like a totally different genre than any everyone else doing like jangle pop and stuff and so I was like "Mm, I just put put the music out on the internet for now and then so the last time I played a show was 2019 like mm-hmm. mid 2019 so quite a while ago but maybe I'll get back into it yeah cool because we have we have Aries the on the YouTube roster Andy Burns and he plays basically from from backing tracks and it's so cool because he always dances a lot and he always <laughs> do like kind of uh funny moves and it's actually fun to watch so 
so maybe that's yeah but i totally get what you, what you say that it's really hard to kind of have fun on stage if you're yeah. doing everything alone so yeah and sorry i lost my train of thought mom i'm in the middle of something right now i'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> no problem. it's authentic <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i was gonna say i mean i used to always be self-conscious because like i don't really consider myself to be like a good singer um and like when I do like tracks and stuff like I, I do a lot of layering with my voice but I also do like a bunch of takes and so like when I'm just singing quietly like I could stay in tune like I have a hard time staying in tune but I can do it but like when you have like the speakers coming at me like I just kind of like shout and then like it, it will never sound as good and I just have to like make my piece like it's just for fun yeah, but, I, yeah I don't know it's one of those things you get like way in your head about it it's actually interesting because I'm I'm finding more and more artists that are not really into playing shows at all which is which is kind of weird because uh I it used to be like everyone wants to play shows but they don't have like capacities or then they do not have opportunities but now it's more like there are people who want to really play and there are people who are like no nope, not at all. Yeah, I honestly do think it's a bit of like a Spotify effect. Like people are so obsessed with their numbers and like I am too, I'm definitely guilty of it. But like nowadays it's like, if if, if you meet someone who's a musician, you go to their Spotify and if they have like 200 monthly listeners, you're like, oh, this could be good. Like, you know what I mean? We, do, we have different metrics of like deciding like what's good or not. Yeah, also one thing that I think about is like in general, people are less uh socializing in some way and uh they I, or what i see on myself that i don't really need more kind of time socializing with other people as much because i have i have so many different talks or conversation on the internet so it's like my kind of need for social so, so, eh, for social life is kind of fulfilled and then naturally I'm like okay I don't need that at this moment so I I guess it might play some role in that and oh uh, so so okay so if you are not really into playing shows like what wh what is the thing that you really like about music like wh wh what is that makes you kind of happy okay it's it's weird because Honestly, I don't make music a lot. Like when I, mm -hmm. so for Prince of Oddities, I had two demos from like years before that was Give It Up and mm -hmm. Full Control. And I had like old demos of them. They're on my band camp. And then mm -hmm. I basically never put them out because I was like, I just wasn't feeling them. And so I came back to them and like kind of like spruced them up and I was like, oh, this is good. And then at that point, that's sort of when I started to get involved with Z-Tapes. That's when I, the first comp I was on was the Frog Lake cover comp. And so I was sort of like, oh, like I was, I was getting like really into music and I was like, sort of like, I kind of want to put on EP just because like, I really enjoy the marketing side of it, which is like, that's kind of lame, but like, I love like marketing and like having people like listen to my music and like giving feedback. And so like, I just kind of like pumped out the songs, like, um, keep my name safe. I wrote that like in a week, like the final mix, like made that in the course of a week. But since then I haven't like really like made, sat down and like made music. So like, I think for me, I, I really have to be in the mood for it. Mm -hmm. But a lot of what drives me to do it is like, I just love the community. And like, I just think it's so cool to interact with other people and like have people listen to your music and be like, oh, like, I like this part. Or like just like just reach out because like lately I haven't been making a lot of solo music but like I've been working on some stuff with like Laptop Funeral and then hopefully something with Pickle Darling so yeah I I'm just I've just been trying to focus on like collabs because like what I used to do was I would be like I have to sit down and write a song every month or something like that mm -hmm. and like you can't force yourself to do something that is supposed to be a creative outlet for you and enjoy it or mm -hmm. like I can't some people have really good work ethics but I don't so mm -hmm. I just have to kind of 
like let myself do it when I want to do it otherwise it'll be something bad <laughs> cool cool actually that's interesting because uh I I I hear a lot of people that say that you know they have to make kind of music you know like that's their kind of way of expressing their feelings or whatever it's inside them but uh it's kind of interesting to hear that uh it's not it's not that for you or it's not that you know like you have to make actually i am wearing pickle darling shirt <laughs> I, know, i love his like i'm i'm literally such a big fan of pickle darling i think it's so yeah. good yeah yeah But, no i think it's funny because i music is definitely something making music is definitely something that doesn't come naturally to me never came naturally mm -hmm. to me i just sort of like have always looked up to musicians and stuff and like i've always been into the culture and I, it's sort of like i i love it so like why not just do it but i've i've quit music so many times like my old ep i like basically like discarded it got it off spotify and stuff because like i hated it so much so like i've quit music for like at least a year like two or three times but i always come back to it so yeah, yeah. <laughs> i you know like i i was quitting my label for so many times that i stopped stopped counting and but the thing that you mentioned that the marketing side of 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 the music i really enjoy that like on the label actually it's kind of one thing why i wanted to start it it was like i want to try it out like what 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 would i do with it or what what step would i take and but then you know the other thing that you mentioned that people around it that's what keeps me going that's what is not making me stop so at the end okay maybe the first initial kind of impulse was something different than what actually it brought so i'm, yeah. I'm glad for that yeah Yeah, and you know what? That's interesting because I a lot of artists that I know, like friends of mine, will just put out something on Bandcamp and then be like, "Oh, like it's good. Like I don't know why it has like 100 plays or something like that." And like it's sort of bad that I I need the validation of people listening to my stuff, but like I I spend so much time sending out emails and stuff, and like I sort of realized that like send out emails doesn't do anything like I do 100% of my stuff on submit hub and before I use submit hub I had like 20 monthly listeners and now I have like 700 or stuff like that like submit hub gets such a bad such a bad rep and I agree it's sort of like an egregious model but it, it works and like I find it super addicting and like I just love using it like even free credits I just love using it and like I get reject like my my acceptance rate is like probably like 10 15% but i will i'll send it out to 200 places each song so i don't know i i get so addicted to it because like it's it's yeah. worth it to to put your music out there if you really believe in it then like i use all the money i make from my jobs to like put my music out there because like if you really want people to like like be able to appreciate your music you unfortunately have to shove it on down their throats a little bit yeah <laughs> Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Actually, that was one topic I wanted to discuss because I know that you you've been using Samiha for a while. And unfortunately, it is getting a lot of hate. Uh, I don't think that the hate is directed at the right place because I think the platform is great. The only thing that maybe it's a little bit sad is there is not many blogs that cover maybe lo-fi, bedroom pop, like less catchy music in general because yeah there are a lot of spotify playlisters and yeah that that catchier songs work better for them so but i i've been using even for my other artists well, some we have and i i see some some good results from it so i don't know why people so hate it that much and even even the numbers on that that you know like if you get even 10% it's great you know like it's still better than nothing you know at least you tried right so like in my experience like i've focused mostly on playlisting and people like the common knowledge on spotify playlisting is like oh you have people who will listen to your song but like they'll never save it and they'll never come back to you but like in my experience that really like, really hasn't been the case because like i feel like it's a really good tool for discovery like not necessarily getting on like the big spotify playlist because i haven't been there obviously there's yeah. people on the label who have 
but like even like small playlists actually all right this is what i do outside of submit hub but what i will do is i'll go on spotify and search up like indie lo-fi playlist Mm -hmm. and like i'll go through and like any playlist with like over like 100 saves or something I'll like, I'll find that person on Facebook or Instagram or something. And I'll be like, Hey, like, can you like, just put my song in there? And like, I've met like tons of people that way. Like I, like I've met people that like, I still talk to, like I send like my merch to just cause they've been like super nice to me, but it's a really good like tool for discovery. Cause like, I, yeah, I think people actually do engage with Spotify playlists a little bit more than they're given credit for. And like, I, I, like basically before this release, before Prince of Oddities, like I nobody listened to my music. Like I had no fans or like anything like that. But like now I have people reach out to me, which is like so cool. And like the only way that I they would have really heard about me is through Spotify playlists, because like I don't think people a lot of people like see that many blogs for discovery. So yeah, that, yeah that's that's one thing that what I'm realizing even with my label that even pitching for blogs will not really translate to any sales or new fans at all like it's just like a really few listens it helps to like kind of build up the name or like after several blogs post you it's it's more legend in some way so it's good for like kind of brand or music awareness but in general it is not serving as it was maybe back maybe even 10 years ago yeah i mean i think it's a good way to meet people because like i've had blogs um that will be like oh like i'll push it to this facebook group which i'm really active in and like obviously like i met you through submit hub yeah that's the funny part i think that there's there's it's it's, there's a bit of a snowball effect because like sometimes i'll be on a big blog and then all of a sudden i'll like notice that i have coverage in like these small independent things which is like cool so like I think people who who read blogs the most are people with other blogs personally or people who are searching up your name yeah but so there's still like uses for it but I'm just not I just don't think that people like read it like a magazine anymore yeah yeah even when when I was like reading some blogs and you know like I top your your music name to the search bar and basically pops up like few blogs so it's great even like if you're like searching for specific artists then you now you have some content besides Bandcamp or some other which is which is always great because like if someone wants to kind of dig deeper into like some specific music or musician then it's always nice to have some content to look at yeah no 100 percent, and like I've, I've, I forget where I read this, but there was some sort of study that said like you have to see some like an ad for something like seven or eight times before you're actually going to check out like an artist. And like it really is like you have to really put yourself out there. Like people won't just like click on like a link and be like, oh, like I wonder. Like, you know what I mean? Like I see so many links on like my Twitter feed every day that I'm just, I just scroll past. Yeah. Like I, I do think like interacting with people and like having like personal connections is like so important. It will always be the most important part of music. Yeah, actually, I think that uh, on other songs podcast, uh, the Scott mentioned that as well. That that you and I ha- have to see it seven times, and I I even find it interesting that then then me tweeting all the time makes makes it more reasonable. <laughs> 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 because yeah, that's that's my thing. Like uh, I spend a lot of time on social media not healthy amount but it i guess it helps kind of to be still shown on the on the feed because this is the problem like everything is overflowed with all the news all the different uh, other artists with everything so basically you have to kind of shout for attention yeah i mean well that's the thing i appreciate about z tapes so much is because I've always been interested in like being like releasing with somebody like having somebody help with like cassettes and like that sort of thing but like you go to you go to people's like labels websites and stuff and like honestly like some of the submissions like people can be really rude 
like they have like FAQs where like they're like passive aggressive like don't send it if it's if not good and like some of the indie labels that I've like looked at their websites they're like if you're not touring don't bother sending you know what I mean like there's all these arbitrary like hurdles that you have to get to in order to release music and like I understand like, you you just release music that you like you know what I mean and uh, that's how I think it should be you know yeah and even I'm not a label for touring artists like I don't support them in this kind of sense and or I don't have means you know to organize touring and also the fact that I live in opposite side of the world it doesn't make sense for me to organize anything like that so uh it's kind of weird because uh yeah some some labels are more strict like problem with me is oh I want to release a lot of music and I don't have space for it that's the problem like I had to even this year I had to drop like five good releases just because I don't have place for them like I don't want to because on one side I would be willing to do like a release every week I don't mind doing that but at the end it's kind of too much and still like even even the amount we release every every year is kind of too much either way so yeah I mean it goes back to what I was saying like in music like in art especially it's so easy to get burnt out oh it's yeah like inspiration really comes and goes yeah you know you just kind of have to follow it yeah that's what happened with many of our bands basically we did the release maybe two and then it got away and basically now I have uh, cassettes that nobody wants because the bands is not longer active or or you know didn't it didn't meet their expectations so uh, yeah. actually I was checking your website and I was kind of uh, I, I really like it I and I wanted to ask like what's the story behind it or Oh my how, God. Um, how did you create well, this because it's 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 pretty unusual I really like it <laughs> yeah I mean I just had my website for a while and I like pay probably like probably like $50 a year to keep it up and so I usually just had like videos and I was I, I was just so much like I just wanted to shut it down because it's so boring but then one of my email accounts is linked to it so I, I can't shut it down and so you know this, I've been getting really into Alex G lately. And if you've seen Alex G's website, it's basically like that. It's just like pictures from his iPhone and like nonsense. And so I was like, <laughs> I was like, I just have to like, I just have to do that. So I was like, just writing a bunch of stuff. And like, it's all true. Everything that I like write about on my website, all of that has like happened. And yeah. like, I feel very like connected to the story that ended up just like coming out. Yeah, sure. But um, yeah, I was just like, just, just so these are just pictures I've taken like over the years and like yeah. then just me talking about them cool cool I really like it like actually I I I've been to your website before and I I, I have but somehow I didn't memorize it but now I, when I look at look at it once more with fresh mind then I was like yeah this is good <laughs> <laughs> more, more artists should have at least so, something like this because yeah. even like even Z Tapes website is just poor, very poor, but I don't have any ideas for it. So I just love it. Like kind Yeah, of I mean websites are but websites are hard because like all the cool websites that I like for artists that like I'm into are like high tech and I'm like, I can't do that. Like I'm done, like I'm literally stupid about computers. I don't know anything. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah I, I, I know like, yeah. It was sort of like I just wanted to embrace the same mentality I had in Prince of Oddities was just like I'm just gonna do it like it doesn't matter you know which sure, is sure. I like that yeah cool okay so uh another thing that I I wanted to kind of uh touch on was like uh, how do you feel like about the release now like did did it met your expectations or do you find it like it like do you relate to it anymore or what is, what is your take on it? Like okay. it's half year almost since the release date. I'm I'm pr I'm proud of it. I'm definitely proud of it. Um 
I like I don't know how to put it in words because like I feel different about it every day mostly like I I literally go back and listen to my music on Spotify every day that's why I can't like post like my top artists because um it's like embarrassing I'm in my own top artist but like obviously there's like a few things that I definitely regret like some of the vocals on Make It Up I'm like not into like I wish I retook them Mm -hmm. but like I would say like that's the only thing oh the drums the drums on uh 20s it's way too loud but like other than that like I try to let it all go I'm really proud of it especially because like once I make music like I have no memory of making these things so like I have no idea how I did a lot of it and like just like going back like not knowing like listening like with naive ears it's like this is cool like I would I would listen to it probably (laughs) yeah cool and uh, I wanted to ask like where did you find the inspiration for the sound? Because it's a little bit different from, from the things that are made like these days, or for me at least, like I find it a little bit standing out from everything I hear in the kind of bedroom pop lo-fi community. Well, that, okay, that's that's interesting. That's very nice of you. Honestly, like honestly, the, the songs that I make, like a lot of them are, I start off as ripoffs of other songs um so like full control that was I like listened to Chamber of Reflection by Mac DeMarco I was like oh I'm gonna make a beat like this like a lot of my songs are like and then like keep my knees safe I was like I'm gonna make something that sounds like la 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 so like I feel like a lot of things I don't I, I do that I like are not original but they end up sounding like me just because like I only know how to make music in one way so mm-hmm. that's how I do it I don't know how they end up how they end up but that's just how I do it yeah i also read that you only use samples or you did yeah. only that like kind of played with samples a little bit and kind of create a sound you wanted like how did came up with the, this idea like was it just like okay i don't have anything else and i will do this or it was intentional or so i used to like for my first ep it's called sun i did drums on everything I did live bass and guitar and I used um like uh what do you call it analog synths and I had to plug it all up and like honestly I was miserable the whole time I was doing it so what I ended up doing is and like I mean this 100% seriously I sold all of my gear and then spent that money on submit hub (laughs) so yeah so I my bass it's a free plug-in same thing with the drums, free plugin. So I usually use like um, I usually use like a, a like a synth drum, and then over I put free samples from Bad Racket. You could just download it, you just look online. But they're really nice sam- Like there's so many nice free things online. And then the only thing I really do is I use uh, guitar, and then I have a fifty dollar um, Juno pl- plugin for Pro Tools that I use for my synths and that's basically all I use. But yeah, I mean, honestly, I like, I can't get caught up in the technicalities of things. Cause like, I just don't know, like I, I will get like way too lost in it. You know what I mean? And I felt bad having gear sit around and like not use it when I quit music, like inevitably like every couple of years. And so it's just better to just do it spontaneously. And like, I think in music, there is a lot of barriers because music equipment is like so expensive like it's ridiculous how expensive equipment is but like no and this is sort of like part of why i think z tapes is so good it's the internet age like anybody can make music on their computer anybody can release it you don't have to be doing tours you don't have to be using like a thousand dollar synth or guitar so like i just i like i appreciate that this is like the new style of music yeah. And like I think I think that's part of why it comes out sounding dif- different because there's a whole different process behind it. Yeah, actually, yeah, actually, that's w- what I kind of enjoy, like releasing music that you know, like I don't care how you made it, you know, like like personally, like I like it. That's 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 the the thing that I care about. Like I don't need like perfect sound. I don't need like perfect mixing. I don't need you know like studio sound. I like, I like the story, you know, I, I like what it is at, or how you made it or uh, actually it's more fun than, than, you know, 
hearing the same boring story that he, yes, we went to studio, we played with some good band or whatever, or we hired some players and kind of like, yeah, that's, that's not a story for me. Right, because, well, this is a funny story. So I have an older song in my Spotify called Lucid Dreaming. And like, I did that with like live drums and everything. And then after that, like a producer in Cleveland hit me up. He was like, oh, like you should like come record at our studio. Like we like your stuff. And so like, I ended up going there and it was, it was $500 for a song. And so I was like, I was thinking about, I thought about it really hard and like, it was a beautiful studio. They had like the mixing thing, like a huge mixing table from the Lion King, the Disney movie. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, it's going to be worth it. Like they, they said they were going to help me with promotion, all this stuff. And like, I went and I like recorded everything and I like paid the whole thing. And like the mix just like did not sound good. Like I had a mix that I sent him. I was like, oh, like, can you make it sound like, sound like this? Cause I already mixed it. And like, it just like, it just didn't sound good. Like, and like he, he I mean, he made the revisions and they sounded even worse. And then I, he only used like a portion of the time and he like wouldn't give me any money back. So I was like, oh, forget it. Like I'm never gonna work with the producer again. Cause like, I don't know. Like I don't, I don't like the way pop music sounds. Like it sounds, I was telling, t telling my brother about this. It sounds like too good to like catch my ear. You know what I mean? Like perfect vocals sounds like boring to me a little bit. But. Yeah, no, same for me. It's that's that's what I do. <laughs> I, 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 I release music that doesn't sound perfect or or it's different. And uh, maybe maybe one last thing because I don't want to keep this uh, too long. Uh, so what do you plan for future with this project or is it something that you want to pursue more with it or you just want to keep it as fun as you mentioned or just like whatever um i th i definitely to? i'm definitely working towards putting out full length but i don't know it'll probably be like a year or more so yeah i'm not sure because i just don't want to rush the process and i want it I want it to be sort of like a consistent sound because like I think Prince of Oddities feels like singles to me, singles that were just pushed out because that's what it was. Um, so like I want to do that. I definitely want to work like a little bit more on like meeting new artists and like being able to be a little bit more of a community. So I don't know. I don't like I'm not I'm not trying to like make too many promises to myself in case I can't do it. but. Yeah, that, that's how I feel about it. <laughs> cool, cool. Okay, uh, I will end it here. Uh, thanks for your time and thanks for your YouTube watchers, <laughs> subscribers for watching this. And I hope you will like it. And I hope we will make more soon. And if you have any feedback or just let us know and also subscribe to our channel. So see you later. Bye, guys.